Welcome back to the channel, you dirty <laughs> You know, I'm pretty disappointed with the lack of SpongeBob memorabilia being made these days. I mean, back in my day, they used to make one-to-one -one scale replicas of Squidward's house. And now, well, I mean, clearly Nickelodeon has given up trying. But not to worry, apparently I've been put on this earth to right that injustice. And I know these look like cheap pieces of garbage, but with a little bit of imagination we can turn these into Spongebob walkie-talkies. Stick around to the end of the video to see how you can take these home. Now to turn these walkie-talkies into ones found in like boating school or hall monitor, we need to first take apart the walkie-talkie and get the components out from inside that we can then transfer into the Spongebob walkie-talkie. One challenge we face with this is fitting all the components into the Spongebob version in the correct locations. Now if you look at the Spongebob walkie-talkie, you can see there are some things clearly missing. Where are the controls to set your frequency that you're gonna transmit on? Where are the batteries? Stuff like that. And to solve these problems, like any good professional, I went to the source material and scoured it for hours, painstaking research. Ah! Oh, man. This show's terrifying. So the push to talk button is obviously gonna be the red little half moon on the side. The speaker will come out of the blue shell on the face, and then the microphone will come out of the oversized grill thing. I don't know why it's past the body of the walkie-talkie, but whatever, I, did. I guess that's ocean engineering. Now on the back side of SpongeBob's walkie-talkie, there's a little colored piece, and this leads me to believe this is where the batteries and the controls for the walkie-talkie to actually work are hidden. Now for the scale of the walkie-talkie, I use the highly, highly scientific method of finding that Patrick's thumb and my thumb, let's say about, are the same. Lord forbid I'm as big as Patrick. Mm. But about an inch in diameter, and then I used lines and paint to just draw the length of the walkie-talkie on one side, and that's what I'm going with. This is what I've come up with for the design. It looks pretty close to the actual walkie with some small changes like the seashell having holes in it for the speaker and the controls will be accessible from the back of the walkie for ease of use. Otherwise you'd have to take the back completely off to turn it on and then put the back on to turn it off, which is super annoying. Anyway, let's get this thing on the old Xerox. So since I keep my printer out in the garage, it has this quirky little error message every now and then that says error men temp. Basically that's the printer saying nobody in their right mind is printing below freezing temperatures. Yeah, my temperature sensors must be broken. I found the easiest way to get around this. You can just put your fingers around the nozzle until it heats up enough to go. And I kid you not, this is how I warm up my bed um, most times to get the printer to go. You can always use like a hair dryer or something, but then I'd have to go get the hair dryer, plug it in. I'd rather just breathe on the bottom of the plate until I pass out. <sighs> And we're off. I'll just sit here while you guys watch your 1 millionth 3D printing time-lapse video while I pad the length of my video with little to no effort. Oh. Are we done already? Yay, all the pieces are done. So we just have to assemble it and it's all done, right? Sorry, I saw a floaty thing. Uh, no, we're not done. No, sadly, we're not ready for assembly yet. The one thing nobody seems to show is the deburring and sanding of the printed pieces, which... I get it, it's incredibly boring, but I'm gonna make you suffer for just a little bit so you can see what it's like. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I've been saying it for years, okay? Pearl is a baddie. I'm tired of pretending she's not. So I just put the shell together. <laughs> get it, shell? Um, just to make sure all the parts like fit together well and I didn't have to reprint anything. But no guts in there right now. Uh, next is to disassemble it, paint it all, and then put it, put it together for real. And when I say I'm gonna paint it, well, I of course mean... How's it going in here? One eternity later. All right, looks like everything's ready to go. Got all our parts and pieces painted, whatnot printed. I think I'm gonna go through the assembly like step by step so you guys can see exactly like how it's built. Um, if that's boring to you, then just like, I don't know, skip ahead a minute or two or whatever it is um, so you can see the working thing. So the first thing I've done is just soldered up all of the necessary components and the wires. You can see we've got our new button here for pushing to talk. And this is our microphone. That's our speaker, and this is our new battery box. And everything seems to be working all right, so that's good. First up is the antenna with the antenna sleeve and the antenna cap. Next, we have the speaker that's been glued in, and then the button and the button holder has been glued in, and the microphone. 
Now, before we go any further, I will be the first to say that I'm not a big fan of these like glue-in designs. I'd much rather when a design is able to take the components out and replace them if need be. Um, unfortunately, the designer on this project uh, kind of sucks at designing things, to be honest, but good thing I know him pretty well. So uh, we'll have a heart-to-heart, -heart, maybe talk about some improvement in the future. So kids, don't make your designs glue-in. It may seem easy, and it is, but it sucks for putting things together and then trying to take them apart. Okay, now everything's installed. Circuit board is in. You can see it's on. You can see it transmits when we hit the button. And here it is with the backplate on. We still have yet to put on the facial features. Dutterly, 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 da. Dutterly, dutterly. Dutterly, 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 da. There it is. <laughs> Well, there it is in all its glory next to the uh, donor walkie. So you can see a little size comparison. Um, all of the controls are obviously in the back. It's actually really nice that you can turn it on and off with a push of a button instead of having to take the back off like I planned and probably like how SpongeBob has to do it for some reason. Testing, 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 testing. I realize you guys probably can't see anything, but trust me, it works. Well, now all there is to do is just Build another one. And then there were two. Yeah. Not really sure what else to do with the walkie talkie. Uh, there really isn't, I guess, that much to show. Call me Kevin Gates because I got two phones. <laughs> okay, you can see it works because if I transmit on one and bring them too close, they'll interfere. I'll leave the mic here on the table and then go in the corner so you guys can hear that I'm talking through the microphone. SpongeBob episode down below so I can fight you on it and tell you why your favorite is actually Band Geeks. You can actually see it's pretty good size. Anybody born in the 1800s is probably reminded of their first cell phone with this. So I made these walkies to celebrate the channel accumulating 100 customers, which is strange. I'm not sure why. Um, but you could be the proud owner of these two SpongeBob walkie talkies. I think, don't quote me on this, but maybe the only two working ones that are like the real model um, in the world. So pretty exclusive and you can get them for free. Um, all you have to do is, since this is a subscriber um, celebration thing, give back to you guys a little bit, um, just DM me either uh, on Instagram, current concept, YouTube, I think it is. I don't really actually know, but I'll put it up on the screen. Um, or just email me at currentconceptyt uh, at gmail.com. Just send me a screen cap that says you're subscribed and include what your favorite SpongeBob episode is so we can discuss about it because uh, I do like SpongeBob. Okay, see you around.